With bigger and better drones available, is the Mavic Air still worth it in 2021? Hey, it's John Bear, so happy to see your beautiful face and in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why I still use the Mavic Air proudly in 2021. Let's go. Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm John Bear and I make videos about how to make videos and I'm on a journey to become a master videographer. So if you wanna be along with that ride, hit that subscribe button. All right, so the Mavic Air is pretty old. It came out in 2017. By now, they already have the Mavic Air 2 and they have the Mavic Pro 2. They even have a new FPV drone. They have so many drones, all of them better than the Mavic Air. So why are you even considering a Mavic Air? Get out of here. Wait, 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 don't go just yet. <laughs> uh, actually, here's the question. Is the Mavic Air good enough? I mean, it shoots 4K. It's reliable and can fly really far. It's very stable in windy conditions, even here in Iceland. I mean, do you really need much more than that? The video quality that comes out of the Mavic Air is amazing. The new and bigger drones have better bitrate, better dynamic range, better yada yada, and maybe they're better suited for professional videos. But still, I think that the Mavic Air, this old generation drone, still looks so, so good. And I have it right here. Oh. And I keep calling them bigger drones, and that's the thing. They're bigger, like way bigger. This thing, it's tiny, it's very small. It fits into this tiny little hard case, and you just can't find a tiny drone like this anymore. The Mavic Air 2 comes out as an upgrade to this guy, but it's still considerably bigger than the Mavic Air. And that's not even mentioning the controller. The controller to the Mavic Air 2, the upgrade to this guy, is just massive. It's a hulking beast. Meanwhile, this controller, it's this small. It folds down very neatly and it folds out like this and you just fit your smartphone in here. The Mavic Air just simply ticks so many boxes for me. I mean, it's tiny, it shoots 4K, it flies really far and it's very stable in high wind conditions. What, what more do I need? All right, so let's talk about some real world use. I've used this drone for about a year and the size is the selling point. I'm telling you guys, this size is just, ugh. I just finished a trip in South Iceland and I wanted to travel light. So I kept all my camera gear in this bag right here. Inside this camera bag, I was able to fit my Panasonic GH5 with the 40 to 150 millimeter f2.8 lens along with the Mavic Air and its controller, as well as two additional batteries for both the camera and the drone. You simply cannot fit the other drones in such a small package. And yeah, by now, some of you are probably thinking about the Mavic Mini drones that DJI has been releasing. And yeah, you know, they're supposed to be small. They're called Mini after all, but even the Mini 2 is larger than the Mavic Air 2. And even the Mavic Mini 2 uses the big new controller, the hulking controller. What I'm saying is if I had the Mavic Mini 2 instead of the Mavic Air, I would not be able to fit it in this camera bag that I was using. And I'm pretty sure that the Mavic Air performs better than the Mavic Mini 2. The Mavic Air is simply heavier. It can resist wind way better and it shoots at a high bit rate. I don't think the video performance of the Mavic Mini 2 is as good as this one because remember the Mavic Mini drones are made for the casual market. The Mavic Air also comes in this hard case that I showed you before and this is very important. Very good protection, love it. And finally, the Mavic Mini drones, they don't really have the collision sensors that the Mavic Air has. So, you know, they cut corners on that. And this drone, it has eight gigabytes internal storage, which is super useful. I was filming this waterfall and was trying to catch this shot when actually my SD card filled up. But fortunately, I could just switch to the internal recording and I could get the shot that I wanted. Amazing. All this to say that I have real world use of the Mavic Air and I just think this drone is more than enough. Like it's so good. As for speed, in sport mode, it can fly at almost 60 kilometers an hour or about 35 miles an hour. So it doesn't really compromise in power. And when I say that the Mavic Air does not compromise in quality, I mean, I flew this thing next to a friggin' volcano. <laughs>
Are there any downsides to the Mavic Air? Yes. Um, these are the ones that I've noticed from using it myself. A lot of the times when I start up this drone, I have to calibrate the compass. It takes only about half a minute. It's not a big deal, but the other drones don't have this issue, I think. The flight time is also somewhat shorter. Uh, the Mavic Air has about 15 minutes flight time, while the other drone, they can push a little bit past 20 minutes. So that's something to consider as well. Arguably the biggest downside is that the Mavic Air uses a Wi-Fi signal, which means that the signal is in theory less reliable than the other drones. And I'm sure if you would test the distance, then yeah. I've never had any issues with it personally, but I have noticed that when I fly really far away, the video stream will be a little choppy and a little blurry. And I've had one instance where I lose the line of sight with the drone because I'm behind a car and then it stopped sending the feed. But that's not to say that the signal of this drone is bad. I've flown this quite far. I've flown it about two kilometers away, about 7,000 feet with no problems. This is of course because I'm flying it in the wilderness. Now if you fly it in a more populated area with a lot of radio signals and interference, maybe you could have some problems. The final issue that I've noticed about this drone is when you fly at max speed, it tilts forward maybe more than the other drones. And so what happens is that you see the camera, it can't go like this because then this part will block the camera. So the camera will always tilt a little bit down. So I've had shots where I'm facing the camera straight forward and then I start speeding up and then the camera just goes don't down like that and it kind of ruins the shot. All these drawbacks are just to say that the Mavic Air has a few things that you need to work around but in no way ruins this amazing, otherwise amazing drone. In conclusion, the Mavic Air just ticks a lot of boxes for me in terms of performance and size. And in terms of performance, I mean, it doesn't compromise much at all. The video quality is amazing. It has all the sensors to make it safer because, you know, I've had a Mavic Mini in the past and the Mini doesn't have sensors. I crashed that guy in a tree. <laughs> My guess is that they stopped making the Mavic Air because, you know, it absolutely destroys the Mini line. So with, if they still had this drone on the market, nobody would bother buying the Mavic Mini drones. This drone is both smaller and has better performance. And remember, I've flown this in very strong winds here in Iceland, didn't have a problem. So if you want the smallest drone that doesn't compromise in video quality and can fly in intense winds, then this is your drone. But if you need the best video quality and you want to be able to fly really, really, really far away, and I mean like, more than 7,000 feet or more than two kilometers, then yeah, you should consider the other drones on the market. The Mavic Air is not for you. Like I mentioned before, the Mavic Air is not being produced anymore, so you might have some trouble finding it, but I'm sure that you can find a lot of them on the used market for around $400, and that's a pretty good price. If you're new to using drones, I would recommend you to find a used Mavic Air over trying to find a new Mavic Mini. In my opinion, this is a way better entry-level drone. Like, this is the best first drone that anybody could get. It doesn't compromise in any area. Like you could use this professionally and I have as well. If this whole video is just like me saying like, oh my God, the Mavic Air is amazing. Then I guess, I guess that's just the case. I mean, I've been using this a lot myself and it just never compromises. Like it's, it performs really well. I mean, it works here in Iceland. So come on, it's a great drone. Uh, so if there's any takeaway from this video, then yeah, it's just, it's a good drone. It's, it's, it's pretty good. All right, let's see how fast I can pack it up. How, how long was that? Um, I'm sure that was not my best time. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. My name is John Bear and I make videos about how to make video as well as like travel videos here in Iceland and maybe other countries as well. If you wanna be along for that ride, then hit that subscribe button and uh, I will see you in the next video. Oh, before I go, I actually flew this Mavic Air next to a volcano here in Iceland recently. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.